right from the word go, I was playing with my friend, and we would play Nirvana covers, and we would play ACDC covers. I think we wanted to play like Maiden and Pantera and stuff like that, but it's way too hard, you know? So we picked the easy stuff. The first song I ever played in the band was, was uh, Highway to Hell by ACDC. And then we also, we did Knocking on Heaven's Door, although I, I'm sad to admit that we thought it was a Guns N' Roses song at the time, because we were like 11 years old. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a collaborative thing at the beginning, really. I mean, in that first band, me and him and, and this one other guy, we played together for a, uh, for a long time when we were kids. And um, uh, my writing at that time, because I was write, writing songs right from the word go, but I mean, essentially what I do is I'd write down kind of like 12 lines of sort of like irrelevant teenage bullshit. And then I'd almost like, I seemed, the way I remember it is I'd almost like pick four random chords and then just like play the four chords. And then and shout over the top of it. And that was the beginning of songwriting. I mean, obviously it was terrible. I started listening when, in my early 20s when I was touring with Million Dead, I started listening to a lot more country music in particular and folk music too. Um, a lot, and you know, stuff like Springsteen, Dylan, Johnny Cash, Neil Young. Just that whole world. And that was new to me because, you know, I didn't have anyone sort of telling me where to start in music. So I started with metal and then I went to punk. And the sort of old classics were new information for me. And it was about that point um, I started thinking about songwriting, you know, as a thing separate from just kind of genres of music or whatever. There was definitely, there was a time in my life, particularly in my old band, when there was a lot of politics in the music we were making. And, you know, I was a stereotypical, angry young man. Um, one of the problems that I've had in my life is that, I've, to a certain degree, I've grown up in public, you know? And the things that I said and believed and shouted when I was 18 are not the same, same things that I say and believe when I'm 34. And I don't, personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but some people do. Um, and, uh, you know, there's nothing fanatics hate so much as an apostate. Um, the problem I had is I went from kind of like radical hard left politics to now I would describe myself as a liberal uh, and as a, as a kind of militant liberal. But, um, you know, some people had a problem with that. Um, also, the other thing is, so that was the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened is that as I got interested in songwriting, as we were talking about, I got really bored of people using music as a means to a different end. You know, and it's like, I want to be in a band to talk about politics. I mean, okay, first of all, everyone can do whatever they want, so if that's your thing, that's cool. But to me, that's bullshit. If you're into politics, you're into politics. I'm into music because I'm into music. I care about music more than I care about anything else by several orders of magnitude. And uh, it's just, I don't know, like, political music's pretty one dimensional and not very interesting to me. Something as simple as rock and roll would save us all. Now who'd have thought that after all, it was rock and roll? History is my passion outside of music, you know, and I try to read widely. Um, and, you know, they'll never, I will never read as many books as I want to read before I die, you know what I mean? Um, actually, one, the last history book that I finished was about Hungary. Uh, it was about the Victor Sebastian's book about 1956. It was a fascinating and moving book. But, um, I don't know, like, I mean, I studied Central and Eastern European history. I'm very interested in and passionate about kind of the first half of the 20th century and the death of Middle Europe as a concept, you know, and um, communism. I've, I've become very interested in the fall of communism now. That's the thing I read about. But then, I mean, there's, there's loads of stuff. I mean, I've, been, I've read a lot of books about the Old West in America. Um, part of me wishes I could be in Dodge City in 1876. That would be pretty amazing. I mean, actually, I don't know whether that's actually true because I'd probably like get dysentery and get shot, you know, but like it was a fascinating time for sure. Well, I'm one of those people where all of my tattoos have a long story behind them and uh, they can be quite boring, I think, sometimes for other people. Well, I've got a pair that I'll explain. So there's a tradition in the tattoo world which comes from the circus, actually, because the Western tra tattoo tradition comes from the circus. Because circus people were often social outcasts in the 18th century, the number 13 became lucky for the circus. And it's a kind of, it's almost like it's a mark of outsider status, you know, it's like um, to have 13 is a lucky number. So 
There is a tradition on any Friday the 13th, if you ask a tattoo artist for the number 13 tattoo, they're not allowed to charge you money. So I played, in fact today, four years ago today, we played at Wembley Arena in the UK. It was my biggest show at the time in London. And um, that was on a Friday the 13th, deliberately, like I wanted the show to be on Friday the 13th. And I got my 13th tattoo that day. So I got that one, I love that one. But then also, I was born in 1981. And then also, 1381 was the year of the Peasants' Revolt, uh, which was the first popular uprising in English history. So I got 1381 on my fingers. USA Budapest! Hodge Badstock Shrustock! There's more. Utva Zolek Ben Etiket Oz Ezer Utsez Hetven Nediedik Concert and Con! What? That's what you said. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's, there is yet more. I hope you're being nice. I'm being fucking delightful. Nice. As ever. Uh, most, hold on. Let's try this a little more. Most Yaronk Mashotsor Modyoro Sagon. Omint Hoyatok. Tokie Leteshen Besailek Modyorun. De moeste os ongulomot fogom diokorolni. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being here. My name is Frank Turner. This is Sleeping Souls. Thanks for coming to the show. It's fucking great to be back here in Budapest again on this fucking awesome ship. So thank you for being here. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say is that I'm an egalitarian. I believe that everyone is equal and everyone is equally welcome on my shows. There's no divisions between us. We are all in this together, okay? We're all the same. There are no divisions. No divisions except for one. I would like to introduce on the electric guitar, Mr. Benjamin Lloyd. <laughs> The nice. best dancer on the stage by some serious distance. I'd like to introduce on the bass guitar, Mr. Taron Anderson! So here's the thing. If I was to draw an imaginary line down the middle of this crowd, that would make everybody on this side of the room Team Ben! And everyone on this side of the room is Team Tarrant! Now, I'm not saying that this is a competition, but it is a competition. Do we have a prize today? No. Oh, well, you fuck it, we'll make a prize. There's gonna be a prize for the winning team. It's all about singing, it's about dancing, it's about getting involved, and it's about having a good fucking time with each other. Are you guys ready for this competition? <laughs> Which team wants it more? Team Ben! <laughs> team Terrence! <laughs> Let's give it a try. This song's about the weather. This song is called The Next Door. I'm 
tap out and face the sun aside And we fucking go So open the shutters Raise up the mast Rejoice! Rebuild the stormers past Cast off the crutches Cut off the cross Rejoice! Rebuild the stormers past Next door. Cause you know, 